Right, today we're going to talk about Advanced FEMA Framework or ATF default padding and spacing for our main layout elements in Bricks Builder. And the main layout elements are your section, your container, and your block. It's also a div, but divs are unstyled, so we're not going to set any defaults on those, just on the three main ones that you use generally for your layouts. And I'm going to show you how that all works. So in the editor, I currently have a very simple layout where I've got a section. Inside that section, I've got a single container. I've added some background color and just put some padding on that container so we can see where that finishes and where our blocks are inside. But that's not a default setting. Uh, that is something I've manually added to this container just so we can talk through this. Uh, between our In our containers, we've got these blocks. Uh, so we've got three blocks. And you can see that there's a spacing or a gap between those three blocks. And that is a default setting, which we're going to have a look at how you how you do that and how you manage it. And then inside that, we've got a block here. That block has a heading and a basic text. And we can see some spacing between those as well. That's a default, which we're going to have a look at. Um, we're then going to look at the uh, next row where we've just got an icon and a basic text. The only thing I've done on that um, there is in my content, I've set the direction to a row just so we can see that we actually have some column gap between the icon and the basic text even though we have not set any column gap here so that's actually pulling that from elsewhere we have not specified a column gap yet we have one but we can still change that if we want that to be smaller we can change that here which i'll come back to same with the buttons all we've done is added a block in that block we've added three buttons and we've set it to a horizontal row and we automatically have our column gap between those buttons. Next thing, if I duplicate that container, we can see that we have a gap between our containers inside that section, which is larger. So we go for a large gap between our containers. We have a smaller gap between our uh, blocks inside the containers. And then we should have a smaller gap, maybe, or the same gap between our content inside those blocks. Entirely up to you. Uh, I'm just going to show you where you can manage this and how that works. All right, so all of this is done through the Bricks theme mapped back to ATF variables, which we're going to show you how to find those. All right, so let's have a look at that first. So let's have a look at our theme. No, no, theme styles. I'm going to go into our elements and have a look at our section. And in our section, you can see we have a max width of a section max width. By default, that's set to 100%. And what that's for is that if we have content that goes across super wide screen, so I've got a ultra wide screen here. And when you get some content on the ultra wide screen, it's not designed for that. It's designed for, say, 1080p, uh, sorry, 1080p screens. Um, then it looks blown out. It can like, yeah. Things just look really crazy. You can restrict the width, the maximum width of your whole section um, by setting that, and it will not blow out wider than that, regardless of how wide their screen is, if that suits your design. We then have the gap, our container gap on rows. So what we're looking at here is we're not likely to set sections as a grid. We're not likely to set it as a row. So we're not going to need any vertical gap, or sorry, our column gap. So what we need is just the container gap. Now, that container gap is setting the gap between these containers, two containers inside of our section. Right? And we can control that through our variables. I would suggest that you never touch these in the theme. I'm going to show you where you should edit these. You can edit them here if you want to, but then you've got a disconnection between the single point of truth, which is ATF variables, and where it is in your um, theme and it can get confusing. So I would say do not touch any of these in the theme. I'll show you where to edit those in the actual variables. So that is our section, except for we have another ATF variable for our top and bottom block padding. So that is a, the amount of padding we have at the top and the bottom of the whole section. And then we've got our gutter, which is our sides, uh, the distance from our uh, uh, the edges of our screen to where our containers start. So that's all we have on a container. Inside the container, sorry, on a section. Inside the section, we have our container. And what we have here is we have our box max width. So that's how wide do we want our box contents. Now, there is a default in Bricks for this. I think it's 1,100. 
Um, we're setting that again in our AT settings, uh, in our AT variables, so you don't have to come back to the theme and edit those. And inside there, we have a content gap. Now, this is a decision that I took where I'm thinking that a container, again, should not be a flex or grid layout. Um, generally, um, I like to use blocks for my grid layouts and flex layouts. And the reason for that is because you can move it. So if you don't want that layout to be boxed inside your container, you just stick it into a section. Or you stick it outside of a section and the layout works. But if you're using your layout as a container, then the container's boxed and you've got to undo the, uh, the width of the container um, to get your layout to do what you want to do. So it makes more sense to me to use your container as a container and then put a block inside of that for your grid layouts or your uh, horizontal low uh, uh, row, row layouts for uh, flex or whatever. That's my way of working. If you don't want to do that, you can certainly come in here. You can put your own, you can copy that, paste it into the column gap, and you can use your containers for grid layouts with automatic gaps and space. Okay, then you've got the block. In the block, all we have in the block is our content gap and for the column gap and our row gap. So in our block, if you look at this, um, da -da -da, this uh, icon and text, we've got a column gap between our icon and our text, which is our content gap. Same with our buttons. Uh, if it dropped down onto another row, uh, we would have a content gap between those two rows as well, because we have a, both a row and a column gap by default. Okay, that is all we set on the block. And that is all we're setting in the theme to get our default spacing. Right. So where would you change these? I would definitely not change them in the theme. I would head over to your CSS variable manager, your AT one, which is I think is much easier to manage uh, than the Bricks one. You've got all the settings here. So here's our site. OK, we looked at the site our maximum uh, box width is 1300 pixels by default. So Bricks by default is, is 1100. We're saying make it 1300. OK. If you want your containers to be boxed to 1440 um, or 1366, whatever, you just change that there um, and um, that will change that. Our section max width is 100%. So it will go whatever width of whatever screen you've got and it'll just blow out your content if you're not controlling the sizes very well. Um, you can set the section max width to say it's going to be a maximum of 2000 pixels wide or 2500 pixels wide. It's our maximum section width, so we're not going to blow out our content. Got a variable here for our blog width, which is not currently used um, in the defaults. If you set up a blog single and you want to have a common point, we can manage the width. You know, if you want narrow uh, blogs, you want the pages on your site to be, say, 1300 wide, but on your blogs, you want them to be a narrow layout. So it could be just a typical you know, image at the top and some copy underneath it. You don't want them to be super wide because it looks crazy. Then you can just set your blog width there and use that variable when you're setting up your uh, blog single. Um, we're going to write that there. We're going to write that there. Okay. And our grids. We have our defaults for our grids. We wouldn't touch these. Wouldn't touch those. Down here, uh, we can set our uh, for our grids. What is our minimum width for a column? If we're going to use autofill or autofill, you'd set that in there. Our spacing. Okay. We've got our variables here for spacing. I'm not going to go into that because we're going in other areas. Um, but for our section, we've got a section padding block set to 2XL. If we want more, let's say we set that to 3XL and super close, super slow for some reason. Go there, close that. And now we've got more padding at the top than what we had before. OK, come back here. And our gutter is set to our space small. Now, space small will go from 10 pixels on mobile to 20 pixels on desktop. So there's a clamp there. If we want less on, on mobiles, we can put, say, five in there or seven in there so it gets closer to the edges. Um, if you want, uh, that's entirely up to you. But that's all managed in this one place here, your gaps. Now, this is the one we started talking about. We've got a container gap. So what's the space between our containers? Um, if I say, just close that. Sorry, guys, my, my uh, bricks is really lagging here for some reason. So between my containers, I can see a space there. If I go back to my variables there, and I set that to, say, 2XL. I'm just uh, trialing a new screen recorder for me uh, called Teller. 
and I'm not sure if that's what's affecting the um, lag here while I'm recording. Okay, so now we've got a big space between our containers because I set the container gap to 2XL. What about the space between our blocks inside our containers? Back to our variables. So our content gap is what we're using for that. We can say we want that to be a uh, content gap is a default of space M, so for media. Now we're going to end up with more gap between our content, more gap between our blocks here. So these at the moment are set to be the same. Um, I could set in here, for example, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. I can go into my theme settings and I go, okay, I want the space between my blocks to be M, but I don't want that much space between uh, my content and my blocks. We would come to our block in here and we would use our dash dash s the column gap dash dash s for our row gap so now we've got a content gap small for our content in here but the content gap medium for our content gap between our blocks that's pretty much all there is to it it's so simple to do um, we can then also go into this uh, here on an individual basis and let's go to say for that test block there we want our gap between our uh, buttons to be only five pixels. We can put five pixels in there, okay? We want to use a spacing variable. We can use content gap. We want it to be bigger, our content gap, actual content gap. Uh, we actually want that to be our content gap large, content gap L. Do I have an L? No, I don't. Okay. Uh, S, content gap S. Okay, what about a, another variable? You can use our spacing variables. So we go into here, where's our spacing, there's our gaps, uh, content gap, excess. So we've got a tiny gap in between the buttons. So on an individual basis, you can control these once you've set your defaults. So that is pretty much how the um, ATF maps variables into your theme, which affects your defaults for your sections, your containers, and your blocks. I think it's a really simple way of keeping it really consistent. Um, uh, love to hear what you guys think. Um, you've got full control, like everything with ATF, you've got full control. You can change those variables here. If you don't like the way these variables work, you can go to your theme and change your settings in your theme. You work how you work. This is not restricting you in any way. So you work how you want to work and um, it will it'll be, uh, it, it'll be what you want it to be. All right, guys, I'm going to leave it at that. Hopefully that all makes sense. And uh, uh, this will make things a little bit more understandable for you as far as ATF goes.